So you see, God's word guides us. First, it hushes our fears. But it doesn't stop there. It hinders our foes. Did you know that? It hinders our foes. Verse 110. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. You see, the enemy sets trap for the psalmist. The psalmist's heart was in his mouth while trouble surrounded him. But God's truth became his guide to navigate through the perilous terrain. We could learn a great lesson here. King Saul tried to entrap David. After David became so popular, he wanted to see if David had aspirations for the throne. So first he got his daughter Merab to give David, because he had killed the Philistine, Goliath, giving Merab to see how far what David's vision was to go to the throne. David humbled himself and would not accept the hand of Merab as a wife. But then he did not stop there. His younger daughter, Michael, she would come to the forefront and she would become David's wife. You can read in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 25. 1 Samuel ch chapter 18, verses 18 and 19. You see, we see that David's mouth was guarded because David was walking with the Lord and delving in the things of God. David knew God's word. And even when Michael was given to David in marriage, Saul was hoping that she would be a snare to David so that he wouldn't come close to the throne. 1 Samuel 18.22 But God steered David around safely because he honored God's precepts. You see, thus God's word can guard us also from the wrongdoing. Look at Joseph, the life of Joseph. Look at Daniel. Not much more needs to be. It hinders our foes. I remember a man, I got to meet him when I was beginning to attend church in Nairobi Baptist Church. He's a man who used to smuggle Bible in Soviet Russia. So, you know, we, we, we had to ask him, so did you lie when you went through the borders taking Bible in Soviet Russia? He laughed. He said, the Bible says, thou shalt not lie. He said, when we came to the borders, my little VW bug filled with Bible on the back seat. Remember those VW bug, the front, uh, that's where the trunk was because the engine was at the back. He said the trunk was full of Bibles. He said they would stop me at the border with a gun to my head and say, what are you bringing in? He said, I never lied. I told him, look. What you see is what we're bringing in. And he said, time and time again, God blinded those soldiers at the border. Either they were believers or God blinded them and they would never see the Bibles that was out in the open. You see, God can hinder our foes. The psalmist experienced this. He said, the wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Remember again, you go to John chapter 15. Abide in me and I will abide in you. Remember how John begins his prologue about Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the word and the word was God. And the word came and dwelt among us, referring to Jesus Christ. So when Jesus says, abide in me and I will abide in you, it's very powerful. It hushes our fears. It hinders our foes. Thirdly, thirdly, we begin with God's word guides us. We saw, secondly, God's word guards us. Thirdly, God's word gladdens us. You see, God's word will remind us of our happy heritage. Look at verse 111. 
Your testimonies are my heritage forever, for they are the joy of my heart. You see, heritage is something we inherit. The most priceless heritage we have is the word of God. And Satan will do everything to stop us from sinking in the word of God. From soaking ourselves in the truth of God's word. So, you know, even with this pandemic, don't be naive to think, oh, because we are concerned about safety. And sure, there are pastors who have preached wrongly. Either they don't seem to grapple with the word of God. And they have flaunted the freedom that we have and abused that. And I'm no, not purporting that we do that, but anything that stops us from coming in fellowship in the Word of God, that is danger. And either we will stand against it or we will buckle under it. The psalmist says, your testimonies are my heritage forever, for they are joy of my heart. Heritage is something we inherit. The most priceless uh, heritage we have is the word of God, the Bible. You see, the believer, however, is like, you know, is like other, for the believer, it's like some other inheritances people receive. You know, sometimes you have a wealthy parents or guardian that passes on and live, lives their will for your life. And you are set for life forever. That's what we would think. But the psalmist draws us, our heart, our mind to something very, very important and very unique. He says, your testimonies are my heritage forever. So the promises Jesus made, as I have come, I will come again and receive you to myself. That is the promise. But to receive us to himself, we have to be ready for him. Instead of being ready for the world and all its foolishness. You see, there's a story that is given about a man. His sons thought he was very wealthy. And they were just waiting for the father to pass on so they could put their hands on the wealth. The father knew that these uh, sons of his would just loaf around. Being a vineyard owner, on his deathbed he told his sons, he said, you know what? The treasure is buried in the vineyard. When the sons heard this, they went in the vineyard and started digging in day in, day out. And they dug around the whole vineyard and found nothing. The father died. The fall came. And the vineyard produced the best crop ever. And that was the wealth. But it would have not come about if they had not done the work that was needed to do in the vineyard. You see, you and I, are in God's vineyard. And in his vineyard, that's where the treasure is. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. You see? So it not only hushes our fears, it hinders our uh, foes, but then thirdly, the word of God gladdens us. Our happy heritage. You see, the secret for those boys, the wealth was to be found in the vineyard. They took to work and it paid off, but not in what they were looking for, but what, where the treasure was. Not only we see God's word gladdens us, our happy heritage, but also our heavenly home. Verse 112. The psalmist writes, incline my heart to perform your statues forever to the end. When is church good for you? When things are going your way? When you enjoy the singing and the potlucks 
And when the pastor is not getting on your back for anything, church is really a wonderful place when it seems to go our way. It's a whole different thing when it is going God's way. Because then there are challenges and convictions that God's word and the Holy Spirit will bring to our heart. How good is the church then? When God's, when, when it seems God's word and God's spirit begins to curtail a lifestyle you've chosen for yourself. See, that's why we have people who come to church when they feel like. Because they're bought into the lie. The church is there for my pleasure. Can I say to you, the psalmist looked at God's truth in a very different way. He said, I incline my heart to perform your statues forever to the end. Do you know, Jesus made life very simple. To be in his word, you cannot but serve him in his church. Remember, he says, I will build my church. How is he building his church? Through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the word. So how involved are you in building your heavenly home? You know, sometimes we take positions in the church but have no desire to really fulfill those obligations. And that's what we look at as an obligation that take us away from everything else. But the psalmist had the right motive. I incline my heart to perform your statues forever to the end. Every service you render to the church of Jesus Christ That's where you've inclined your heart because you see its importance. You see its power. You experience his goodness, not only to your life, but to the lives of those that form the body of Jesus Christ. You see, a tired horse will move faster and pull harder when it is heading for home, when the end is in sight. Most people find keeping God's word to be an uphill, tiring work not the psalmist. He was heading home. He had inclined his heart in that direction. When we ride our bicycle up the hill, it is always difficult. But once we get to the top, we get excited because now we can jump on our bikes and roll down the hill. And when we come to the bottom of that hill, we pedal so hard to make up the next hill. The psalmist found keeping God's word gave him momentum. It never lost, he never lost the sight of the end of the journey. And we should not lose sight of our journey. Jesus is coming and no pandemic or government will stop him. Until then we are his occupying force here. His word is our weapon his Holy Spirit is our commander-in-chief. And this is why I say, let's move and occupy until we hear the call come. You know what is sad today? And I say this to my own shame. We give to the church, to God, where it does not hurt. If you have lots of money, you can give lots of money to Christian causes. And maybe in the end it's going to mean very little. You can come and work so hard in building a monument for yourself in the church of Jesus Christ. And that will have very little payment back. Because you know what God first desires? You to give yourself to him. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. When your heart belongs to him, it's not hard to give anything else.